What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video brought to you by Delta Bravo. So many of us are staying home and practicing social distancing during this coronavirus pandemic. And so for a lot of us who are pilots, we're trying to stay fresh. So what are we doing? Well, if you're like me, you're flying flight simulator. And so I'll be showing you how to sync that to your fourth flight. So stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. So I think flight simulators, they, they get a bad rap and they're, they don't get as much credit as they should. To be honest, I really like flight simulators because one thing for me, for example, I'm used to flying round gauges and on the flight simulator, you can actually choose an aircraft with the G1000. So you can get used to having a glass cockpit and a primary flight display. Uh, another great benefit is that you could practice flying in the, in the right seat by just moving your throttle over to the left and flying with your right hand. That's another thing that I like to, to use Light Simulator for. So I think it has a lot of great benefits that people don't really realize where they actually can help you become a better pilot and be a proficient pilot. So during this kind of craziness at the moment, during the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of us are just using this to kind of stay fresh, not current because you can't stay current or you can't log the hours from the flight simulator uh, in your logbook. So use this for practicing and getting better practicing your checklist, for example, um, practicing your, your flying, your emergency engine outs. I like to do that too. I always just, you know, pull, pull away the throttle and when I sink it to my foreflight, I can kind of see where the glide slope is and kind of see how far I am from the airport and see if I really will make it or not. Um, so I use it for that. There are some games in this, um, but you can use it a lot for just a normal free flight. Use your foreflight as your flight planning. You can still use that. Use your iPad for everything that you'd normally would use it for. Before we get started, there's a few things that you gotta know. So some of the requirements are that you've gotta download a few things. There are three programs that you can use to sync to your Flight Simulator X. And those are the MyStar GPS, FSX Flight, or Flight Sim GPS. Now what I'm going to use is the Flight Sim GPS. The first two, the MyStar GPS VR and the FSX Flight, you have to pay for. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it completely yet in order to buy it, so I'm going to use the, there's a free version of the Flight Sim GPS that you can download and activate later if you choose. Some other things you have to be aware of is that you've got to, you've got to obviously install your Flight Simulator X. Your iPad or iOS device, you could use your iPhone even, has to be connected to the same internet system that your Flight Simulator is running off of. So whatever computer that your Flight Simulator is running off of needs to be on the same internet network. So I'm using uh, an ethernet cable, but you can also have your computer on Wi-Fi, and then obviously your iPad or iOS iPhone device also on your Wi-Fi and it'll work. Another thing you need to do, you need to download the Microsoft.NET Framework 4. I'll show you how to do that. You need to download the FSUIPC, and I'll show you where to get that. And then obviously I'll show you how to link everything together. It's pretty easy. So let's get to the video. Okay, so for the option that I plan on using is Flight Sim GPS. Just go ahead and go to flightsimgps.com and you will come to a website that says Connect for Flight to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So go ahead and just download. Here we go. Flight Sim GPS. It'll ask me to run it, save it. I prefer to save it in a specific location. So I want it on this hard drive. And I have a folder here Flight Simulator and for Flight Needs. And we'll go ahead and save it there. Save. Okay, now it has finished downloading. Let me just open the folder real quick. Um, show you where this is. We'll go ahead and double click it so that we uh, get it installed. It'll go through everything there. That was pretty fast. Okay, it is computing space requirements. Go ahead and do go through all of the prompts. I want it on this C drive. So that looks good. Obviously, then it asks if I want to do that. And it is successfully installed. Great, perfect. Let's minimize that. So now we have Flight Sim GPS, which is the main thing we need. The next thing we need is now the Net 4.0, which I already have. 
but I'll show you that anyway. If you go there, you just need to download it here. I already have it in my downloads here, 4.0 right there. Okay, great. All you need to do is just click download and go through the prompts. It'll set up pretty easily. And then the next thing you need to have is the FSUIPC download here. So go to the FSUIPC website and it'll bring you to Pete and John Dawson software. So we want to thank those guys for providing this software. And what you will need is the FSUIPC 4.974 for Flight Simulator X. FSX-SE. Obviously you wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't here for the FSX. So go ahead and click on this. Go ahead and do the same thing of saving it. And right here where I want flight simulator for flight needs. Yep. Let's try to keep everything in one location. Perfect. All right. So now it is here. All I have to do is extract it. Let's see, extract to this folder. And it's extracting. There we go. Open it. Um, go ahead and read some of these other PDFs if you'd like. Otherwise, just go ahead and click the application file. Obviously, you have to go through that all the time. And uh, it's always showing on my other screen. So I'm just trying to. Uh, well, I can't really show you that. Yep, here we go. Now, it says to. Please select options here if you're about registering. So right now I'm going to just say both and not now. Otherwise then you, I think you have to pay for it. So now it is installed, but you don't have to register. You have the free version. And if you read the notes here, it does say you will still need the wide client from the link below. So install this as well. Don't forget that. Save as, we're going to save it in the same location. And it's going to save it here. So we have to also extract the file. There it is. And then go to the application file and allow, allow X. Well, let me show you. It comes up with this screen. I'm going to go ahead and select the private network, such as my home. I mean, I won't be in any public network, so we'll just take that off and allow access here. So far, I got this uh, screen here. You can go ahead and minimize that. So you now have the wide client activated there. Uh, with your FSUIPC. Let's go back to the home screen here and let's read the instructions here. And that's basically all there is to it, guys. And I first want to make sure that I have Flight Sim GPS open. That once you search for your Flight Sim GPS, you'll see this screen right here waiting for Flight Simulator. Go ahead and open your Flight Simulator. Here's my Flight Simulator. Flight Simulator X acceleration package. Also guys, just so you know, there is one slight problem I've been having when I open my Flight Simulator X. I keep getting this error code saying the publisher could not be verified. Are you sure you want to run this software? So what you should always do in case you get this is also just click run. And then when you get to this screen, would you like to designate this module, blah, 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 as a trusted software? Select yes to automatically load the software whenever you start Flight Simulator or select no to load this software for this session only. I always found that the best way to do it is to click no and just do the whole prompts over and over again every time you, you start uh, Flight Simulator. So if you click yes, the problem I kept having was that it would crash. So go ahead and click no. And then everything should run like normal again. So here it is, it's opened up um, and then we'll get started. Another way to check to make sure that you did this correctly is 
Once you are into your flight in Flight Simulator, go ahead and check up here at the top. You should see a menu button that says add-ons. If you click on that, you should see FSUIPC, which is what we downloaded earlier. So if you did everything correctly, you'll see that and then you'll be all set to go. Okay guys, so here we are. We've got our Flight Simulator open and we're gonna connect it to four flight here in a little bit, but first let's make sure that we get the right airplane we wanna fly. Let's do the Cessna 172, the green one, cause you know, Delta Bravo green. And we've got the daylight and current weather there. So we're gonna fly at Friday Harbor, okay? Let's go ahead and fly now. Okay, first thing we need to do is make this full screen. So we can actually see Zoom out a little bit. You could put anything here. Um, ATC, conversation, light switches, whatever you want. So I think we're set up to go. On four flight, if you did this correctly, you can go to four flight. You'll see that my current location is where I'm sitting at now. And if you go to more and then devices, uh, go to devices, you should see the MSFS is not enabled. So we need to enable it. This is just like how you would enable your uh, or connect to your Stratus. So go ahead and enable it by clicking on it and select enable, go back and you'll see that it's connected. If you did it right, if you go to your maps, you'll see that your location immediately switches over to where your flight simulator is flying you at. And in my case, it's the Friday Harbor. If I press, if I resume the game, if I give it some power. And as you can see, the airplane pops up and we are flying. All right, there you go, guys. So we're gonna we're in cruise altitude right now. We're beaming the numbers when we one six. Let's go ahead and try to land this. We're below one ten. Let's go ahead and drop our flap ten degrees. Friday Harbor, November nine seven four four Delta, turning left base when we one six. Oh no, engine out, emergency engine out. What's the first thing we do, guys? Pitch for 65, right? Let's go ahead and do that. There's our 65. Friday Harbor, November 9744 Delta, emergency engine out. Repeat, emergency engine out. Mayday, mayday. Friday Harbor, November 9744 Delta, in the left base, runway 16, emergency engine out. I figure this turn wheel out. All right, let's turn final. Friday Harbor, November 9, 7, 4, 4, Delta. Turning final, runway 16, emergency engine out. What do you think, guys, we're gonna make this? There's our runway. Come on. Second notch of flaps, we're high. If we can afford it, put them all in. Flaps in. Actually, we'll just make this a real engine out. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, look at that, control maintain center line. That's how you do it, guys. Practice your engine outs. I've got no engine, actually. So, we made it safely. No crashes. And as you can see, the four flight automatically switches its, uh, to the taxi diagram when you land. So, this is a great way to practice your engine outs. Great way to practice steep turns, stalls, whatever you want to do. Um, so continue to fly. Okay guys, thanks for watching. As I mentioned, Flight Simulator is a great way to stay fresh, especially in checklists, doing your stall simulation, your steep turn simulations, emergency engine out as I just showed you, water landing even just for fun. You can even start flying in different weather conditions just to see how that affects your airplane, all of the movement and things like that. So Flight Simulator is definitely a good way to stay fresh. And if you aren't flying as much as you should be right now for during this time of the coronavirus pandemic, 
then you should definitely try to play simulator. I just have a si simple setup with just only the throttle setup, the yoke, and the pedals. That's basically all the minimum that you really need. Um, you could actually, if you get really good with the keyboard, just use the keyboard for a lot of these things. But just to actually get a real good simulation, you at least should have these three minimums. Um, you can even get radio panels, all kinds of gauges, things like that. But to get a good feel of flight simulator, just these three things, and that'll be it. If you have any questions, drop them below in the comments section or reach out to me on social media at delta.alpha.bravo on Instagram. And we'll see you guys around for the next video.